Inside this box is a cheaper and better version of the Steam Deck, or at least that's the pitch. Now, it is a good pitch. $300, running SteamOS, AMD processor, I mean, what's not to like? Well, maybe a couple of things. This is the Ioneo Next Lite. Now, this got announced a couple months ago, and as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh my God, I gotta get my hands on one of these things, because it is a really, really cool device. Now, it's not running SteamOS exactly. Instead, it is running the open source version, which is HoloOS, which is largely the same, but this is one of the first non-Steam Deck devices to actually ship with a version of SteamOS. Now, since this is shipped, they've changed their story just a little bit. It no longer ships with HoloOS pre-installed. Instead, it runs Windows 11, which is nice to have, but if you want to install SteamOS, you can download it from their site, and supposedly it is fully supported, drivers, all that kind of stuff, which I will definitely be doing. The other thing that's changed since they announced this is the price. So, you remember that $300 very, very compelling value proposition? Well, they sold them at $300, 100 of them, and then they upped the price to $350 for everyone else. But, considering that they have not been able to keep this in stock over the last couple of weeks as it's actually gone on sale, I'm very curious to try this because even at $350, that is still cheaper than all but the absolute most basic version of the Steam Deck, which only comes with 64 gigs of storage. With 512 on this, this is actually like a usable kit right out of the box. I'm very excited. But, is this even worth considering compared to a Steam Deck or something like an ROG Ally, which is now being discounted as low as 400 bucks? Well, there's only one way to find out. <laughs> Real gamers, no gamers. Yeah. Oh, sh son. That is pastel blue. Ooh. Okay, I was highly unsure about the color. So this comes in white, which actually has the neat like orange sort of uh, highlights, black as well as this pastel blue. Oh my God, that is, mm. Mwah! That looks so good. Now I'll say that while the Steam Deck is a very nice piece of hardware, I've always thought it's too wide. Like it's, just, it's too physically big. Not only in your hands, I think it's okay, but just the fact that this thing will take up like half a backpack, at least with the Aya Neo, it is a little bit more compact. It doesn't have quite the same sort of sculpted grips, but the weight feels okay enough that I think this would be okay for a while. So when it comes to running Windows on the Aya Neo, I have some thoughts. Um, let's talk about specs first, because when you're talking about $300, $350, you expect some sacrifices in the spec department, and that is absolutely what we see here. So first and foremost is the display. It's fine. It's a 1280 by 800 seven inch panel, pretty much the exact same as what you would get with the original Steam Deck, which means that it is acceptable. The resolution's fine. It doesn't look great in Windows, just because even though you've scaled a little bit, everything's a little bit blurry, but for games, totally fine. I think the spot that's a little bit more um, of a compromise <laughs> are with the specs. So on the surface, this is very similar to a Steam Deck. They both got an AMD Ryzen based CPU. So this is using the Ryzen 5 4500U, which is technically slightly better than the Steam Deck because it's a six core processor instead of four and they're both based on the same Zen 2 architecture. But then it starts to get a little bit tricky. Now, they did do a good job of outfitting this with 16 gigs of RAM. I will give Ioneo that. They could have skimped out, they did not there. So it does match the Steam Deck. However, when you go to the graphics, well, these are significantly older graphics. So because this is the 4500U, this is before the RDNA 2 graphics showed up. So these are still the Vega graphics, which were fine for a integrated laptop GPU from 2019. But when it comes to playing games on this, I suspect we will have some issues, especially when it comes to AAA titles. But before we go too deep, let's actually go and do some gaming on Windows right out of the box and see how well this holds up. And then we can decide, is SteamOS the answer that we need or should we have just bought a Steam Deck or an ROG Ally or a Legion Go or an MSI Claw or a Nintendo Switch OLED or a Game Boy Advance SP. So we're gonna try a couple of games here. Um, we're gonna start out with Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk is a game that runs acceptably well, I would say, on a Steam Deck. It's not a great experience, but it's fine. Something else I'll say about this running Windows specifically, it's kind of slow. Now, part of it is because it is running that Ryzen processor, which uh, is significantly behind what you would get in something like the ROG Ally. And because it's running Windows, it's not as smooth of an experience as it is on SteamOS, which feels very well optimized. What's going on right now? I couldn't tell you. But look, I'm gonna be real. 
this is not gonna be a good experience. There's zero shot it's gonna be a good experience. I'm gonna give it the best possible shot. I'm gonna run it at potato quality. Oh, snap. Wait, is that actually 39 FPS? Huh? Wait, that's not awful. 46 average FPS with a minimum of 36. That's actually not terrible. Let's try Forza because we actually, we might be onto something here. I was expecting this to like give me like 15 FPS. Now Forza is a game that is pretty well optimized. I think we will be able to get a pretty solid lock 30 FPS in the game. I don't actually think it'll be that difficult. That being said, we're definitely burning this battery. Right now we're already down to 79%. We were at 95. 15 minutes ago? If even, like we're almost doing like a percent of the battery per minute, which I guess is not way worse than Steam Deck, but Steam Deck usually gives you, even like the original like base Steam Deck, would still usually give you close to like two, two and a half hours in most games. This is looking like maybe an hour and a half, if I had to take a guess. Damn, dude, this thing is cranking. CPU, GPU, RAM, all 100%. I'm changing my settings, but okay, sure, why not? Okay, so everything's set to low, so let's do a quick benchmark. Did it cr crash? I was trying to say something nice. I regret my decisions. And it's actually gonna run the benchmark now. That's weird, I had to restart the game for the benchmark to load. Okay, whatever. Yeah, we're at 40 FPS. So it's not brilliant. I would like to see a little bit higher and the image quality is poor. We're throwing everything we can at this to get the best experience possible and it is topping out in the 40 to 45 FPS range. But where this becomes far more interesting, I hope, is when you load up a copy of SteamOS, AKA Hollow ISO, and get that sweet, sweet Steam Deck on a budget experience. Or so I hope. Let's actually do that now and um, <laughs> get rid of Windows because this is not great. So it has been a couple of weeks since we unboxed the Aya Neo Next Lite, and boy oh boy do I have some lovely updates for you. So, while Windows is fine, you know, the main reason why I really want to try this is not only the price, but also the fact that you can run SteamOS. Asterisk. Well, so when you go to the IONEO site and you go to their support page, you'll see that there's like a BIOSes and drivers and stuff, and then you'll see the Hollow ISO image and tutorial. Lovely. What happens when you hit download? Well, it takes you to a Google Drive link, which, wait, it works now? Oh, it works now. Oh. They opened up. So, for the last two and a half weeks, we've been waiting for them to give us access to download this. Now you can actually grab it from the site. Now I'm going to try to follow these expert tutorials and uh, install this on my iNeo. I want to see if this is officially supported by Hollow ISO slash SteamOS ish, what can I actually get out of it? No ISO or supported files found. I'll be back after trying to remake my flash drive and see if somehow that will work because this is a whole bunch of not working right now. One more time, one more time. Boot normal mode, so I'm gonna go through the process again. We now have two flash drives installed, one of which has our clonezilla, which is what we're going to use to copy hollow ISO to the internal drive. Did they tell us to do this? No, they didn't, but I'm not sure how else you would do it, so we're gonna give it a shot. There's no way to mount the subdirectory. Well, I'll do it anyway. No, I can't, it cannot do it. I can just tell it, I don't care how it's not mountable, just, do it anyway. I will say, I am not on the tutorial at all. None of this is, it's, it's like, hey, hit the button and go for it, my dude. Things are happening now. So we are currently cloning, theoretically, hollow ISO from our flash drive onto our SSD. I think I'm copying the right thing, maybe, possibly. The instructions are about 50% of what you actually need to do here. So there's a lot of filling in the, the blanks. Um, we're <laughs> almost there. That is 69% uh, completion. Hmm. It sees 500 gigabyte SSD and it has 258 gigs in use. That's not right. It says it is gonna take two and a half hours to confirm that the disk has been written to correctly. Three minutes to install, two and a half hours to verify. Okay. Whatever just happened, I'm pretty sure it's not right. I'll see you tomorrow when we inevitably fall deeper into the rabbit hole of this lovely, lovely device. It is 4.58, my friends, and I think we've done it. So after some fiddling, 
rebuilding the USB because at one point we accidentally overwrote an image onto our flash drive instead of the SSD. I think we've installed something. So let's find out, shall we? Oh, booting SteamOS! Oh, snap! Yo, let's go! Um, you saw that, right? You saw when it the the, the, the logo was there and said SteamOS. See you tomorrow. <laughs> so I've been informed that it is time to try again. Do you want to give me any context at all? No. Did you do anything to it? You'll find out. Oh, hey, something's happening. It's in Chinese, but something's happening. Guess I'll let it verify for a little while, and we'll see if I've finally hit the jackpot, or whether I'm gonna drop this thing on the floor, put it back where it belongs. As you can see, SteamOS is up and running. However, that's about it. So there are immediately some problems I see here. First and foremost, these buttons on the side don't do anything. So I can't actually open my little like Steam menu. I can open up the left menu, like open settings and that kind of stuff. Uh, it does say that there's a software update. I don't trust that. Um, otherwise though, this does largely seem to work. The brightness works, audio, everything like at first glance seems to be fine. But, uh, well, there's a little problem in that it is stuck, I think, at like 100% max speed. Um, listen to the fan. It's just doing that. And also blowing out very hot air all the time. It's as if it's gaming, except it's not. So, I have some thoughts as I'm sure you can tell by the hours and hours we spent to try to get to this point. But let's give this a fair try and play a game. Is what I would say if I had enough space to install anything besides CS2 because somehow during the very lengthy install process, we have only uh, formatted this as 97 gigabytes. Why is it 97 gigabytes? I know, but honestly at this point, I just want to see it do a thing. Now, uh, as you might have imagined, CS2 not exactly a great game to play on a Steam Deck or a portable device, so I'm gonna be using a mouse and keyboard. <laughs> Look, uh, so for context, for only $50 more than this iNeo, I can get an actual Steam Deck. This is an LCD model, a 256 gig model. So just keep in mind, this is $400. This is what I'm comparing it to. All right, let's hop in here and okay, that's some of the frames. Now, can I pull up, oh boy. I'm getting 42 FPS. It looks okay, actually. Uh, oh, the stutters are real. Now, would I get more performance if I had spent an hour processing shaders? Probably. Hey, you know what you should do is turn up the TDP on that. Oh yeah, I can't do that. I'm sniping with my pistol. Okay. About the only nice thing I can say is that we have an actual game running in hollow ISO on our INEO. That's literally the only nice thing I can say. Okay, but can I ask a big philosophical question about Please this? Please do. If you can't get into the Steam Deck settings, yeah, then what is the point of the OS? Because otherwise this is just big picture mode. Yeah, you're not wrong. Um, except it's a lot more work and I've somehow lost four fifths of my SSD space and several weeks off my life expectancy. The idea of a $300 Steam Deck competitor running actual Steam OS sounds great. I don't mind the hardware. I don't even mind a lot of the cutbacks and the fact that it's got 16 gigs of RAM and a big SSD. That's all great. That's really, really good stuff. But the Steam Deck exists. And while it's, yes, slightly more expensive, not really, especially if you're really looking for something on a budget, you can find yourself a used Steam Deck and maybe even upgrade yourself for around the same price as we bought this new. And this one, surprise, surprise, works. Thank you very much for watching. Don't buy this Ioneo. Ioneo, if you're watching this video, fix hollow ISO, the end. The end. The end. Alex hasn't slept in weeks. It was the worst handheld experience I've ever had.